Corey. All right, awesome. I think we're in business. So welcome tonight to the uh, Team Persevere February team call. My name is Liz Bellini, um, founder and CEO of Team Persevere. I've been a coach since April of 2011. I'm going on my sixth year being a coach. I can't believe it. It feels like I just signed up yesterday. But um, it's uh, been awesome to lead this team. Team Persevere had an amazing 2016, and we are starting 2017 off amazingly strong. And just to prove that, I am going to share recognition so far this month in the month of February. And bear with me, guys, because my computer is a little slow. What is going on here? There we go. All righty. So here we go. Let's see. Where are we going to start off with? I like to start off with probably volume. Okay, so if you're new to the call, if you're a new coach and you're not sure what volume is, volume basically is um, generated through people buying things from you, whether they're buying challenge packs or Shakeology or just standalone programs or supplements or or any kind, anything from your Beachbody website generates volume, okay? So this particular volume recognition is for this past week. So I usually recognize for 100 volume points or more. So um, I'm just gonna rattle off those that are in the 100 volume point category really quick here. So Misty Russell, who is a brand new coach. Um, Robert Gillum, Amy Salazar, Alyssa Flores, Elizabeth Sweeney, uh, Mason McGowell, uh, Jessica Hendricks, Jessica Garber, uh, Kristen Brennan, Jennifer Duramis, Elizabeth Lambert, Sheila Lewis, Heather Stetson, Corey Snyder, Cheyenne Kirikoff, Vanessa Liu, Andrea Chris Caden, Tracy Dowling, Chelsea Runkle, and Stacey Wilson, and that is 100 volume points or more. Uh, in the 200 volume points, we have, let's see here, Jerry Isaacs, Tina Dick, congratulations, Tina. Tina is rocking it this month. Um, she is hitting success club for the first time as a coach, too. Um, and Jennifer Cupcho, and topping the volume point list for this week at 300 volume points or more is myself. Wow. And um, <laughs> Heather Stetson, she is about 10 volume points ahead of me. So congratulations to those coaches um, in the volume category. Uh, next, I want to recognize um, those coaches who have rank advanced in the past, what, um, 22 days since February 1st. Congratulations to Holly Lopper and Andrea Coleman, who both advanced their business to Emerald Coach. Emerald Coach is such a milestone, you guys. It's a chance where you get to earn um, a secondary um, way as far as income goes. As just a coach, you earn from an income uh, commission-based standpoint, just people buying from you. But once you become an Emerald Coach, you are eligible to receive a team cycle bonus. So um, that's great. Congratulations, ladies. Um, and then lastly, I want to recognize Four Success Club. So, so far in the month of February, hitting um, Success Club. Well, actually, let's let's recognize for people who are almost there. Um, and this was pulled ju just this morning. So if by chance you hit Success Club sometime between, um, you know, this morning and, and now and your, your points are not correct, I'm sorry. Um, but so far... Um, on the board for the month of February with two points. We have Nicole Schmucker, we have Annie Kuffner, uh, Vanessa Liu. Uh, at three Success Club points, we have Chelsea Placer, Chelsea Runkle, Kayla Christie, Jennifer Duramis, and Jennifer Legru, Jessica Conley, and Tony Bellini. Wow, good job. <laughs> That's my husband. <laughs> Those are my points. <laughs> But anyway, he's laughing in the other room. Um, let's see here. Four points on the board. Uh, Tina Dick, who I just talked to this afternoon, and she just helped somebody with an all-access challenge pack. So that girl is going to be in the club for the first time. Congratulations, Tina. Um, all right, all right, all right. Who do we have in Success Club already? At five points, Holly Lapper. At six points, we have Amy Salazar, Jennifer Cupcho, and Josh Lambert. And with seven points, we have Jerry Isaacs at 20 points on the board, Heather Stetson. Alrighty, that's what we have so far for the month of February. There's still time to hit Success Club, you guys. We have um, a little over a week left, so continue helping people get started with that challenge pack. Um, the All Access Challenge Pack is um, 
going to be indefinitely available. So um, just know that that was announced on the um, national wake up call um, a couple weeks ago and the last week. So um, that's a really great deal. So we'll be able to still take advantage of that um, until February 28th. It's going to be worth three success club points after February. It's going to be worth two points, but also now after February and maybe even now, I'm not sure, but Shakeology home direct orders will be worth two success club points as opposed to just one. So if you get somebody signed up with um, Shakeology Home Direct, it's gonna be worth two success club points, which normally it's one. So um, that's great because I think the last call that we had in January, we were really talking about um, Shakeology retention and why we need to really talk up Shakeology and really drive it home, really talk about nutrition because Shakeology is going to be the sticking point in helping our customers get the results that they want. And it's also going to help us have those strong foundation within our business. Okay. So, um, so that's good. Alrighty. So let's see here. So for the topic of conversation tonight, I wanted to, um, talk about um, us coaches and how we really have to deal with the haters of the world, the haterade. Um, and, the haters come in all different forms. You know, they come in, um, you know, disbelievers um, on our Facebook um, news feeds. They come in the form of friends and family and coworkers. And I got to tell you that in the beginning, when um, coaches first sign up, um, first of all, it's, it's really, um, it's really a vulnerable thing to put yourself out there on social media to begin with, but to, um, you know, bring to light uh, an unconventional business model like Beachbody coaching when you, when, when the world sees all different kinds of people promoting Beachbody, some do it professionally, some do it not so professionally. And unfortunately, the not so professional ones tend to shine a little bit brighter than the ones who are doing it professionally and they give us a bad name. So not only is it a vulnerable situation, but we have to kind of fight through to kind of prove ourselves and I got to tell you that it's it's a it's a hard fight and unless you have the personal development and the mindset to know that if you just keep going you will eventually weed out the haters and you will find your tribe and you will find your people who do support you and who do um, enjoy hearing from you and um, believe in what you're doing so um, here are just a couple of um, my tips on that um, especially if you're a new Coach, or maybe you're just a coach that um, has been around for a while and you know are still kind of inside your head about um, uh, you know being rejected or dealing with the haters or dealing with people who seem to have opinion about everything um, but um, <laughs> I would love for you to share with me your situations in the chat feature and um, maybe give me some of your experiences that you've dealt with so that maybe I can play off of those but um, but first things first, all right? The number one thing that I uh, try to help um, new coaches uh, do when they first get started is to share their journey openly on social media. Honestly, that is the number one best way for you to start getting the word out. Um, the wrong way, obviously, to do that is to start, you know, posting your Beachbody links all over the place and saying, you know, hey, I'm a coach and, you know, hey, you know, check this out, check this out. I mean, that just screams by my shit. And um, that's a funny uh, kind of phrase that I always kind of joked about when I first started because that was kind of like how I felt, you know, I was like, I just want people to buy my shit. Like, so just go to the link and just buy my stuff. Um, but that didn't work out very well because people don't want to be sold to. People want to, um, you know, have a connection. They want to trust people, um, people who trust other people, um, you know, buy from those people. Think about uh, yourself when you're making a purchase. You want to buy from people that you trust. You don't want to buy from people who are just going to sell you something and be gone the next day. Um, you know, used car salesmen could learn a lot from that concept. Um, uh, car salesmen alone could, uh, you could learn a lot from that concept. So when you are going into, um, you know, coaching and something like this, where maybe you're, you have no idea what it um, means to be a salesman and you have no idea how to go about this. The number one best way for you to get yourself out there is to just share what you're doing and share your journey and just share your program, share how it makes you feel, show your excitement and show your passion. 
And to be completely honest, those that want to criticize or hate or make fun of what you're doing, you really want to thank those people, you know, maybe not openly, but, but in your heart and in your mind, you really want to thank them because they made it so easy to see that they are clearly not your tribe. You don't need to worry about convincing them. You don't even wor need to worry about paying them any mind. Those people are not your tribe. They are not running your race and they are not going to be the people that are going to get your help. Okay. So honest, honestly, you know, ignoring is the best policy, but sometimes it's hard to ignore them. Um, but the best thing you can do is uh, kind of look inward. And the number one thing that I think that when I became a first coach, the concept that I grasped, grasped, grasped right off the bat was that when people judge you, especially openly, you know, people who want to say things um, about what you're doing or, you know, criticize you, uh, that says more about them as a person than it says about you. And I know that it's really hard to not think that, to not question yourself when um, you're openly putting yourself out there and somebody, you know, um, maybe makes fun of your rabbit food or um, says, oh, oh my gosh, she's going to eat a piece of cake. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm to, I'm to, I'm, these, these examples that I'm giving you are things that I personally um, dealt with when I first became a coach from family members. Okay. And um, it was hurtful. It's hurtful when it's people that are, um, you know, family or friends uh, because they're the one that is supposed to support you. But for whatever reason, it, it's so much easier for them to, make fun of you. I don't know why that is, but it is. Um, and I had to really, you know, stop myself and say, okay, this is a reflection of them as a person, not me, even though it makes me feel bad. Only I can control how someone else can make me feel. Someone else cannot control how that makes, how they make me feel. Nobody is that powerful. Nobody is that powerful, um, even though it feels like they can be. Only we can make ourselves feel bad about what other people say, okay? And a lot of that comes, um, you know, realizing that is from personal development. So, so know that. Um, number two, um, believing in what we're doing, believing in our mission. If you truly believe in the mission that we have as coaches and what we're sharing with Beachbody, then um, you know in your heart that what we're sharing is a good thing, despite what other people say. You know, we know at the heart of what we do that we truly and genuinely really want to help people live a good quality of life. And we have the products that are able to do that. You know what I mean? And I know that social media can be tricky because we can post and post and post about um, everything that we're doing. And sometimes those posts um, don't get as much traction as we would hope. And we kind of feel like nobody wants to read our stuff. Nobody's interested because not many people are liking or commenting on it. But the truth of the matter is, and this is so true for new coaches, and it's so true for coaches who lack the consistency in sharing what it is that we're doing. Okay. Um, and this all comes down to Facebook algorithms and science. So um, basically, when you first jump into something like coaching, people are kind of watching and waiting or waiting and watching to see what you're going to do. They want to see how legit you are because there are so many coaches, because there are so many other multi-level marketing companies out there. Everybody's selling something um, and not everybody stays in stick. Okay. It's kind of like a fad, you know, and People want to see if you're going to stick around and stay, if you're going to be legitimate, if you are going to be around in a year, in two years, if you're going to be around long term. People, remember, people want to join people that they can trust. People want to follow a leader that's going to be there in the long run. All right. So in the beginning, 
it's not that people don't want to join you. It's not that they're not interested in what you're doing. It's just that they're kind of waiting and watching to see if you're legitimate, if you're for real in this. And they're trying to decide whether or not they're going to follow you or not and believe in you and trust in you enough to actually hand over their money to you and say, sign me up. Okay, so it really comes down to consistency and believing in what your mission is and believing that it's true. So um, I like to call those people weight watchers. <laughs> so they wait and they watch. Okay, they see your stuff, but they don't want to click like and they don't want to comment because they don't want to um, make themselves vulnerable to, you know, opening up a conversation because then that means that they're, they're like hooked. You know, so it's like a psychological thing. All right. They, people see your stuff. They're watching and they're just waiting. They're watching and waiting to see other people comment on it. They're watching and waiting to see if you're legit. They're watching and waiting to see if you're going to be around next week, next month, next year. You know what I mean? They're, they want to see you doing it. And that's why being a product of the product is one of our vital behaviors because nothing proves that this stuff works more than you doing it and showing that it works, right? So being consistent and sharing your message openly on Facebook is gonna do wonders for you guys, even if it's not completely um, getting the traction or the reaction that, um, that, you, that you are hoping for. Okay, so, um, so Jen, I wanna read yours. Um, she said that you've had, you've had people say, Oh, I thought you did this from the kindness of your heart. I didn't realize you were like that, that happened earlier. Um, and it hit on you hard. Um, yeah, yeah. And you need to get personal development, um, behind that. Um, I, I can tell you how many people, um, have told me like they ask, uh, uh, Oh, does this cost something? Because, um, you know, I don't want to pay for anything. And this is after I've explained like everything, like you're getting a program, you're getting meal plan, you're getting a, a meal included in this. And people are like, Oh, you have to pay for that. I'm like, yeah, wait, wait, what do you think? I'm just going to like, like dig it out of my backyard and just hand it over. Like it doesn't work like that. And, and I have to, I genuinely have to, you know, humble myself and I just, you know, have to politely, but sternly, you know, remind them that, yeah, well, um, no, unfortunately it's not free, but, and then I kind of, you know, slide it in there. I'm like, I actually give a ton of free tips openly on my Facebook page every day. Um, you know, I could charge for that stuff, but I choose to share all of my fitness tips and recipes and, and food and, and things like that for free. So, I mean, if you don't want to pay for anything, you can just continue to follow me and get what you need that way. But if you want a more structured plan, then yeah, it's going to cost something, you know, just like if you want, um, you know, uh, something from Walmart, like a blender or something like Walmart's going to charge you for the blender, right? It's not free. That's kind of like, you know, what we do. We're, we're a business, right? We're offering a service and you, you pay for that service. You know, I provide, um, you know, financial security for my family. This is what I do for a living. You know, I don't come to your place of business and say, Hey, you're going to give me your goods for free. No, no, I got to pay for that. Same, same here. You know, so I just kind of have to remind people like that. And, and honestly, it's, um, presenting yourself in such a way. You know what I mean? Presenting yourself as a business, you know, um, when you're wishy-washy about this, then, then people think that you are offering stuff for free. So treating your business like a business coming off like a business will help you along the way too. Um, so yeah, Josh says, uh, he seconds that he has people all the time say that my posts or videos are great and that I'm inspiring, even though these are people who never comment or like my Facebook posts, people are watching. They really are. And I have a ton of people that do that too. Um, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like I always say that, you know, people are just weird. They, they just are weird. I, I, I'll tell you, one of the biggest things I've realized since being a coach the past six years is that, um, uh, people are just really, really odd. I don't know why that is. It's like a, it's like a, I don't know. It's just like a personal thing. You know, they don't want to make themselves vulnerable. You know, it's a, it's a trust issue and they, they're afraid if they make themselves too vulnerable, then they show their weakness or, um, they know other people are watching and, um, you know, we have to once again, remind ourselves that that's a reflection of them. You know, you know how we, we work on personal development to work on our issues and, you know, things like that. 
what most people aren't doing on the outside mm -hmm. are working on personal development. Think about yourself as a coach. Um, did you do personal development before you became a coach? I know I didn't. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was. Read a book, listen to an audio. I thought audio books were for old people. Like <laughs> I did not even. Uh, so if honestly, if it wasn't for coaching, I probably still wouldn't be doing any sort of personal development, honestly, because I didn't know it existed. I didn't know that I needed to continue learning. And the, and, and what's sad is the majority of people don't, they don't do it. They don't do it. That's why the majority of people struggle. That's why the majority of people have relationship issues. That's why divorce is so high rate. That's why children are failing in school, you know, um, so yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, Jennifer, what'd you say? When you feel bad or scared about um, sharing the package when you come from a place of fear, it can be felt, absolutely, absolutely. Even over a, a Facebook message, like, you know, it, you portray that in, in what you say and how you feel, for sure. Um, so, so just, um, Honestly, it comes down to belief. Really, it really does. Um, I was gonna bring Tony in here <laughs> because, um, I, I really just think he wants FaceTime, but uh, honey, can you come in here? I can. Uh, because you're kind of like, I mean, you, I mean, the majority of the team knows our story and how you were kind of against Beachbody from the beginning, but um, I don't know if I'd really call you a hater because. Oh, major hater. No, you did you were the work. bad, I wanted you to quit. You worked, you worked, you did the workouts and stuff like that. It didn't mean I approved of the business. No, but we're just talking about more of like, um, uh, here, do you want to get your face in here? Hi, guys. That is not your face. No. <laughs> well, can I have a seat? Or, I mean, what, what should I do? We're kind of snug over here because now Vinny is over here. Because he's an idiot. <laughs> he's not an idiot. <laughs> guys, I got a video to watch for you. Get this glass of wine right there. You guys got to watch this. What video? It's an MLM. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. You're so the haters thing, right? Yes. Um, Liz gave you the story. Five years in the business, blah blah blah. Um, do I need them? It's not really. No. All right then. Um, so yeah. In the business for five years, lost a bunch of weight. I hate these. Got in great shape, but what had happened was she got so involved with the business that I started to hate it, and then I started to doubt it, and I became one of the people that you will probably have to cross roads with eventually as far as being a naysayer, being... What? A long chair. <laughs> I just had to do the mute thing. <laughs> what? It, somebody came unmuted. On a lawn chair? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody was talking about a lawn chair. <laughs> All right. Did you? So, the haters are the motivators. All right. You guys, did she tell you that? Mm -hmm. Did she mention that? Well, why do you think, let me ask you this. Why do you think people are so openly um, judgmental about things? Because like they this? themselves are weak. Right. Uh, that, that, that's a no brainer all day long. If they're going to pass judgment on you, the bottom line is they're weak as shit. Excuse my French. Um, but they're just shitty people. Well, I wouldn't say that because. Oh, they are. Because so I was. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, say so you're calling yourself a yeah. shitty person. They just don't, it's not that they're a shitty person. It's just that they, they are seeking to be more, um, they want to be heard. They want to be, cause they got nothing better. They want to be understood rather than trying to understand. Are you sticking else. up for them? Though? No, I'm not. I'm just, you know, as opposed to just calling them names. Bottom know? line is you're going to cross a bunch of people in this business, especially you new coaches that, you're going to meet a lot of people or cross paths with people that were like, or that are like I was. Does that make sense? Um, and I was even on board with the program, still am to this day, 
but the business part is what just infuriated me. And I think a lot of people don't understand the aspects and, and, and the balance of the, I hate my dog, the balance of the business. So that's why they, they, they tend to, you know, people are cattle. That's all there is to it. And they all think you got to trade dollars for hours. And Liz and all you guys on the call right now, hi, everybody. You guys are proving that to be wrong, right? So, God, I, I want to tell you to just ignore them or let them be your motivators. But it's. I think eventually they come around. If you the do, haters if do. you do it, if long you enough. handle it properly, and if you do it long, hell, enough. I came around. Well, yeah, but but why did you come around? Because you saw. I don't think I had a choice. Well, you saw the consistency, and you finally saw that it, I was legit, right. right? I was legitimately doing this, and it legitimately worked for somebody who stayed consistent right. in it. I would, like I said, I just use them as motivators, really, because I think yeah. honestly, I motivated you. You did. The more I bitched and moaned and complained and <laughs> cried. But the woe is me, time, and this, that, and the other. You just, she worked harder. So essentially what I did was push her into being more successful with the business because I told her it wasn't going to work. I said it was going to fail and this, that, and the other. But here I was driving 60 miles one way to work every day while she was sitting here at home with our twins doing whatever the hell she wanted on her own time because she had the ability to do so. And yet I thought I was the smart one by wasting $600 a month in fuel, spending a minimum of 12 hours a day away from home here in lovely sand, dusky Ohio. It is lovely. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, like I said, just there, there, there's one of, several things you can do with these people one you can just ignore them but they're never going to stop they're just going to keep pushing they're, that red they're, button they're, 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 you. yeah they're just gonna they're gonna keep thumbing you in the side you know like that that rock in the bottom of your boot that won't go away they're gonna stay there until you prove them otherwise so the bottom line is just put your nose through the grindstone where's your camera at i don't even know what i'm looking at it's right here the little green button that yeah hey been doing that the whole time. <laughs> so just He's a big dumb animal, folks. I'm a big dumb <laughs> animal. <laughs> God, just screw them. Like Liz takes a different approach. She loves everybody and I don't. <laughs> you just gotta put your nose to the grindstone and fucking prove them wrong. That's all there is to it. So you you get you gotta that's my take on it. Lambert, you know, I love you, man. You're a dude. I and mean, you can kind of, you listen to Metallica and all that good shit. Liz, you can go sit in the corner for saying what you said yesterday. <laughs> Eat your chicken fingers and preservative fries and whatever else. We need to get the medicine, strap the medicine ball around you. No medicine balls for me. <laughs> but yeah, like, just, I'm, I'm not going to take up any more of your time, guys. I was the biggest hater. Now I've kind of done a complete 180 because. I still had to go to work every day for insurance purposes, pretty much. Meanwhile, she's at home just tic tacking away on the computer at her own free will. So let that be a little bit of motivation for yourselves, too. Because, you know, it just, God, there's so much I want to say in so little at the time. Uh, the haters are the motivators, and the risk takers are the history makers. That's all there is to it, right? Oh, I like that. Yeah. So just, man, screw them. And if they want to say something, send them my way. I don't yeah. Or Liz's way, whatever. No, don't send the haters my way. <laughs> you have fun. I have fun with them. <laughs> I just ignore them. Let, let me tell you a little bit of story. No, what are you talking about now? The, the, my transition. Mom, we want to play Uno. Let's go. Okay. Oh, my okay. kids want to play Uno, so I got to hit the road here pretty quick. I was a hater even after our first trip to Disney because I was so annoyed with all the rah-rah shit. But it was a little beach body overload. Yeah, a little beach body overload. But the moment we set foot on a cruise ship, but keep in mind this is beach body. And you start looking around and you realize what a good thing it is. So keep that in mind too. If you know where I'm going with that. But bottom line is just stay focused and <laughs> all right, these kids are coming. Stay focused, guys. Good luck. <laughs>
Uno. Who's gonna win it? Uno tonight. I want Uno. <laughs> our, kids, our kids discovered Uno last weekend when we went over to a friend's house for dinner and swap hands. Swap hands. And so um they've been hooked on Uno every single night. So every night has been a Uno night. <laughs> but um yes, um that was my husband. <laughs> He, he makes some valid points. Uh, clearly, we have a different way of looking at it. But um, <laughs> either way you look at it, you see it from both perspectives. But um, that's all I have for you guys tonight. I hope I provided some really good insight, and Tony as well. Um, our next team call is going to be March 22nd, and we are going to have a guest speaker from Josh Lambert, who is going to deliver an incredible message. So please mark it on your calendar and definitely tune in. So we'll see you guys later and have a good rest of your night. Mom, you point it off? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>